This video is going to be a film study slash commentary look at Josh Reynolds, the veteran wide receiver who's set to visit Baltimore on Friday. Would he help the Ravens offense in 2024? And if so, why isn't he headed back to Detroit for another run at a Super Bowl there? Look, Lions fans, some of them are going to watch this video, will focus on two big drops in the NFC Championship game, rightfully so. They, they were shocking for Reynolds based on the play that I saw out of him in 2023. One of them was a fourth down drop, one of the controversial fourth downs, if you will, that Dan Campbell chose to go for. Another one was a third down, third and nine, where he's wide open. Look, they were surprising to me. He's a reliable receiver, at least in my judgment. Very tough. Someone who is not only a consistent red zone threat, but a guy who makes catches with and around contact, including in the NFC title game. I'll show you three different plays from that game. A lot more had to go wrong for the Lions to lose that game after taking a 24-7 halftime lead. A lot more had to go wrong than just two drops from Reynolds. A couple of statistical things before we get to the film. He did finish 2023 with only 40 catches, but 32 of them were for first downs. 80% of his catches were for first downs. Any Lions fans in the comment section, feel free to correct me here. I think his first 16 or 17 catches were for first downs. Maybe the number is 15, but it was a significant number. We reached a point in the season where it was noteworthy, if you ask me, where every one of his catches was for a first down. Uh, like I said, any Lions fans, feel free to correct me there on how many it actually was. I feel like 80% of your catches going for first downs is a significant number. Would he help the Ravens? Absolutely. I think it does tell us possibly something about the Ravens' front office and the free agent and draft strategy that now this week they've signed a bunch of underrated players. Arthur Millette, a key contributor to the defense. A former Raven, Chris Board, who's an inside linebacker slash special teams player. And then a backup or, or swing tackle, if you will, a guy who's versatile in Josh Jones. And now they bring in Reynolds. He's a six foot three wide receiver who you kind of know what you're going to get from him in terms of overall season impact. We'll let some film flow, flow through here of 2023. He's not a real big deep threat from just a run by people standpoint. If he was to be in the combine, he's not, I don't think he's running any super impressive 40 time, but he's very precise with his routes. Always in the right place at the right time for Jared Goff last year. Consistently find space in areas of the field that Goff specializes in. The second level of the defense between the top of the numbers from one side of the field to the other. I call them zones two through four. With the underneath zones, the underneath five zones being one, two, three, four, five. Basically not between the hashes, just the, not restricted to just the middle of the field. I guess the middle three-fifths of the field, if I said that in a way that makes sense. That's the part of the field that Goff operates in brilliantly. One of the reasons why I sort of I sort of don't understand why I'm not trying to bring Reynolds back, but with all their free agent signings on defense, the Lions clearly have the opportunity to go receiver with their first pick at 29 if they want to. <clears throat> um, maybe the Lions tried to bring Josh Reynolds back, and the numbers just didn't work. He's exploring other offers. I, I can't blame him at all. I think he helps the Ravens' offense immensely in 2024 because he doesn't require a lot of targets in order to have an impact on a play-by-play -play basis, meaning he doesn't have to have a target for two or three possessions, and he can give you a 22-yard catch to open up the very next drive. He's a good third-down receiver, if you ask me, and that's coming from a situation in Detroit where they had Iman Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta. Two unbelievably good options on third down. If those two are healthy in a 16-17 game season, they're going to take up between 250-270 targets in, in a normal season, if you ask me. There's, there's not really much else to go on in terms of overall targets. And, and he did have 62 last year in Detroit. What else there is, what other targets there is outstanding, would probably be soaked up by Jamison Williams and Jameer Gibbs, two big play guys. For Reynolds' career, 
he fits in Baltimore right now, if you ask me. He becomes another outside receiver. He's not he's not like Aguilar, who is best suited to um, just playing in the slot. Reynolds, Bateman, and Zay Flowers are your core outside wide receiver group, with Aguilar being the, the do-everything guy who fits in wherever you need him to in a particular week or a particular play. I, re- I really do like his toughness, his ability to make the catch just before or, or during contact and then hold on to the football. Big third down catch here to close the game out against the Saints. Third and nine. You can see the Lions are still going with a play action on third and nine. Just over two minutes left. Tough catch against Mann. Finish the game there. Look, you have to mention the 49ers film. Uh, Lions fans who are in the comment section will themselves. These two drops were big. The fourth down throw here, I think, is, is maybe a little bit behind him because the rhythm of the play got altered. But this third down with two minutes left, I never saw this from Reynolds in 2023. I don't think drops are a problem, but you can't blame Lions fans for, for focusing on these things. Just a bad, well, two bad drops at the absolute wrong time. This one right here, Goff put right where it needed to be. Reynolds is wide open. It can't be understated how huge those two plays were, and, and some Lions fans would, would obviously think that's a disqualifier in terms of trying to bring him back. He did make a ton of big plays for Detroit in 2023. I think he'd be a reliable asset. And if you look at what the Ravens have done this week, if you sign a guy like Josh Reynolds, you, you, your needs are really clear going into the draft. Outside corner, tackle, and, and edge or outside linebacker defender. It means basically they're not going to draft a wide receiver early. Not at 30 or maybe not even 62. I'm starting to wonder if the Ravens aren't going to trade back into the second round. Look, looking to get a guy like Braswell, <clears throat> uh, mid second round, who I don't even know if he's going to, you know, last that long in terms of being on the board. The other option, the other thing that I think about possibly with this signing is one that I don't really. It, the NFL offseason has been weird in 2023 and 2024. I wonder if the Ravens are looking at moving one of their young wide receivers, like a Bateman, to gain somehow gain additional picks in return. Not sure that they could get pick 45 or 50 for a Bateman, but to me, it looks like a possibility if you bring in a guy like Reynolds who doesn't miss games. I think the season when he split time and ended up coming back to Detroit 2021 or coming back to work with golf in Detroit mid-season 2021, he only played 12 games that season. Otherwise, 14, 15 games every season. He doesn't miss time. <clears throat> um, one aspect of his game one aspect of the Ravens' offense that improved vastly in 2023, besides the pass game, was red zone capability. It was really good. It was almost perfect early, right? That We couldn't keep up that pace that we had early in the season. Still ended up far and away better than 2022 or 2021. Reynolds brings that element. Smart, tough, wide receiver. You can throw him the football. Not necessarily contested catch situations, but he's going to hold on to the ball at contact and, and take that hit and finish the play. Five touchdowns in 2023, 19 for his career, but 11 since coming over to Detroit in midseason of 2021. I think that's significant. Regular season 2023, regular season 2022. Eight touchdowns, two in 2021, and then one in the playoffs. If you ask me, if you can bring in a guy like Reynolds, 40, 45 catches, five touchdowns, 30-plus first downs, just basically taking the numbers from 2023 and recreating them. If he can give you that in Baltimore in 2024, how much is that worth to you? I don't know. With all the guys who will need the football, Flowers, Andrews, Henry, we'd like to see Bateman get the football more. I just did a film study video on him couple of days ago you're welcome to check that out if and when Keaton Mitchell comes back Reynolds to me looks like a perfect fit from this standpoint he doesn't need a lot of targets to have an impact he's a chunk play guy is the word that I kept or phrase that I kept coming back to in my opinion he he mostly thrived in Detroit in 2023 on a bunch of three and four target games the Ravens have a problem 
in that they can't already get the ball to Bateman enough. A former first-round pick, I think he's ca- he was caught in that cycle, rotating snaps oftentimes with OBJ in 2023. I don't want to see the same dynamic created with Josh Reynolds. There wasn't enough targets at times for Bateman. So if you're one who doesn't want to see Reynolds sign because you want to see Bateman be relied on, I understand that. <clears throat> I think Reynolds is being looked at as a guy to play less than we played OBJ, but be there in case we need him. Kind of like an Aguilar situation. I don't think he'll be on the field for 45 snaps a game. And look, Bateman's targets last year were low, and that's with Mark Andrews and Keaton Mitchell spending significant time not on the field, and we didn't have Derrick Henry, who's going to get at least 15, 18 carries a game. In the case of Andrews, he'll be back to play full-time. Mitchell, we don't know when he's returning. If the Ravens sign Reynolds, how does that impact Bateman? I'm not sure. I, I would not advocate for moving Bateman. Apparently this week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, there was in Houston, Texas, there was some kind of mention about them looking to trade for Bateman. I'm not sure that I see that as realistic. I don't know what the Ravens would, what their motivation would be there. Um or what they'd be able to gain in return, because the Texans have traded away their first-round pick. I don't think the Ravens could garner a first-round pick for Bateman. The front office obviously has to target O-line in the draft. It's a deep class there. Maybe they intend to move on from Bateman, swap him out for Reynolds, gain more picks this year, and then stock up on O-line, corner, and a a young wide receiver. I'm not saying that that's what I think is going to occur. Reynolds is a very experienced and reliable receiver, He's, he's only 29. You could theoretically use him for another two years, regardless of what the overall plan is. <clears throat> and I don't think it's to move on from Bateman. I would accept and welcome a signing of Reynolds. He's a <clears throat> he's a six foot three wide receiver. Great ability to to make 16, 18 yard catches. Look, he averaged 15 yards per catch in 2023. I forgot to mention that earlier. He's able to win in one-on-one situations on slants, on fades. You saw, I think, one example against Green Bay of not even a three-step fade, just golf, taking the snap, immediately throwing it up. He's extremely reliable and smart. He stays engaged regardless of the, of the number of targets that you get him. Also, some film exists of him being a really good blocker. Um, out on the perimeter and on pin pull concepts, which Todd Munkin uses oftentimes, especially to the boundary. I think it's a smart signing. I'm o- I'm comfortable and okay if if people who are Ravens fans are not as big a fan, they just want to draft a wide receiver. I feel like this adds depth. Better signing for the wide receiver group than a, than a Jones for the for the offensive line group, if you ask me, because Reynolds is actually a starting caliber receiver in the NFL still. Appreciate you guys' time, man. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this video, please consider grabbing a link to it and sharing it out on social media. If you've ever considered joining my Patreon to support me, uh, please check out the link that's in the description to the video here. We're going to try to do a mock draft this weekend where people draft and represent different teams, and then I produce a video off of that early next week. If If that sounds like something you think would be fun, please let me know in the comments section. Appreciate you guys' time.